Okay, back on the FXR. I already got the uh, the cam shimmed out, um, and the breather gear is already shimmed. I shimmed it when I took this apart last year, and I think I'm ready to put the timing cover on or the cone on, and then I'll put the lifter blocks in, and then adjust the uh, the adjustable push rods. I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I think I've got everything. <laughs> Jump from a Norton to a Harley is totally different. But uh, yeah, I think I'll put a little bit of a little dab of uh, gasket sealer on there a little bit. Wipe that out. My furnace is so noisy, should cut out there in a minute. When I get the bikes all done, I'll rebuild that blower motor on there. Probably don't really need any gasket stuff on there. Yeah, I'm not even going to put any on. I got this sealed on there. If I goop it up, then it gets really hard to get off. So here I can get it off. Okay, let me get a little bit. A little bit of assembly grease on here. Okay, timing gears are all lined up. I don't think I'm missing anything else here. Forget where these screws go, like the order they go in. In most engine cases, should stick out a half an inch. That's a little bit too far there. That one might be all right there. I think there's three different lengths. Yeah, so that's that one up there. That's the longest one top left corner those okay so these are slightly different lengths here there's two that are probably five millimeters shorter that are slightly longer. And there, half inch there. That one's right, that one's right, that one's right. This one's a little bit too long. I got another one here. The furnace is still going. Yeah, the reason why I got this one extra long screw here is that's where the uh, the mounting bracket goes for the uh, uh, exhaust. And I removed that. For the stock exhaust, there was a mounting bracket here. I'm just gonna snug them up with this.
I'm going to clean the threads up and out for a while, it doesn't seem right. my ear hose on. Doesn't look like anything's plugging it. Got my quarter by 20 tap here. First thread might be a little bit bugger down there. I better run a die over that too. Set that up there. Goes a long ways. See something here. Comes out. going to clean up the threads on this. I'm going to put this in first, put this in, because that bolt that I got to put in goes through this uh, lock here. This has got a little tip to line up. That's a metric bolt. <laughs> Five mil by eight threads per millimeter. There's a little bit of blue Loctite on that. Here, if you put too long of a bolt in there, you can go in and block a passage way off in the uh, oil pump <laughs> or in the cases. Okay, I'll put these two screws in. When I took these apart, the two screws, the two studs um, stuck to the screws. I gotta find the Allen head for that. tiny wee allen head on there that's just bound to get stripped i should try to find something better than that okay
Oh shoot, just put the washers on those. These come with a little washer so you're able to slide the timing uh, plates back a little better. A little easier. I just set it dead center in the middle, and uh, I can actually time it now with the plugs out and just turn the engine over. That there's no way the valves can hit the pistons without the push rods in there, so might be a might try to do that now. Have to hook the battery up. This over top of the holes, and uh, oh, I'd have to. I gotta plug this all back in too, though. Okay, so I'm just gonna go under here. a lot easier wiring and uh, putting the cables and stuff in without that big arm in the middle of everything. That's not beer. That's those uh, fueling lifters. <clears throat> they're the most expensive lifters you can get for the Harleys. They're, they're the best ones. They're uh, low leak down. Or those s and ones, once the bike gets warmed up they start leaking down and tapping like crazy. These are the best ones. I've had them, you just have to soak them in here for maybe six, eight, 12 hours, but they've been in here for like a week or four days anyway, four or five days. It's too busy on the Norton. Okay, ready to put these lifters in. They're all soaked in oil, but I'm gonna put a little bit of this uh, assembly loop grease on it to kind of hold them in place as I drop them in there. Makes it a little bit thicker for them, I'm hoping. So they don't slide out on me. I'm just about out of this stuff. I gotta get some more this week. one front corner got those in there got that in there okay that one's in there
Okay, I gotta drop this in fairly quickly so uh, I don't lose those lifters. Like that. They've already dropped down. Okay. Then I'll get the screws in. Just going to put all the screws in loose. Because there's an oil hole at the back that you want to line up. They sell alignment tools for these things, but uh, I don't think you really need them. I've never ever had an issue. If you get the four screws started loose, you're pretty good right there. But what you can do is you just turn the block a little bit. Just let it settle into the right spot, I'll show you. My hands are so oily, I can't hang on to nothing. If I'm not... Uh... I have to go wash my hands. Yeah, I gotta go wash my hands. Once you get the four of them in there, you can kind of turn it back and forth. It'll wiggle just a little bit, and you want it to settle right in the boat in the middle. And uh, that's close enough. Put these snug. Come on. Okay, I'm going to work on these. Make sure you get all these little rings in these type of blocks first. Just gonna make sure I got nothing in here already. It'll chew up your O-ring without those in there. Should have the uh, I think I got this one's in here the o-ring and this one was missing that goes like that and uh, I'm trying to organize these things that goes like that so yeah this one here the o-rings missing so that was that one just goes down like that Okay, the exhaust push rod is a little bit longer. Not much, a couple mil. Inside one's intake. So we get this in here first. I got them turned all the way down. I'm not sure if I got that lifter. Uh, fuck, I need light. Yeah, I got that turned all the way down. There's lots of videos on the internet there on adjusting these lifters. Lots of them, tons of them. And uh, so 
don't necessarily go by me. <laughs> I'm no pro. But um, what I've done is I've turned the, uh, I got it in fifth gear, and I've turned the back wheel over to get this, uh, uh, this is the rear or the front intake push rod. And I just set it so it's just loose. It just spins in there. You can just feel maybe a little, little bit of play, not much. And then you want to turn it four face flats. Well, there's uh, or four, four revolutions, this top nut right here. I don't know if you can see in there. How am I going to do this? One second here. Maybe, maybe that's brighter. I'm going to do this intake one here at the front. So the top part of the push rod's got a built-in nut on the bottom of it there. Yeah, maybe that's better, I don't know. You can see that, but this top nut here. So right, right now I've got it, so it's just, if you turn it just even like one face, you can feel there's play in that rod. So you just want to take that out so there's zero play there. And the bottom of the threaded part of the push rod is seven uh, millimeter. You can get a seven millimeter wrench on. So you want to hold that perfectly still. And you can just feel it, it just tightens up right there. And uh, 24 faces. So. Hard to see that because I'm putting black black marker on a black push rod. Let me see if I can find it, my gray one. Okay, I just took my little pick there and put an etch on it. Okay, I'm gonna lock this into position. And uh, I'm gonna turn um, I gotta put up, I gotta put this thing up, <laughs> one sec. Now my furnace kicks on. Okay, seven mil half. There's the etched one there. Gonna lock this one. And uh, start doing faces. Four complete turns or 24 faces. <laughs> There's a mark on there from before. Well, I put an X on it. There's one line there. I probably did that the last time I did this. Oh my God. Okay, there's the one that I put on. It's got an X on it. <laughs> right there. One turn. Two turns. Three turns. turns right there now I can lock this nut up I get another half inch wrench So that hydraulic lifter is like a little hydraulic piston in there with a spring and oil. And it's got about, I can't remember, it's not an inch of movement, but uh, whatever it is, three quarters of an inch. So by turning that, no, maybe it's, I don't even know what it is, maybe it's a half inch, I can't remember now. 
but you want to turn it so it's in the middle of that stroke, like a shock absorber. You don't want it to be at the very top, where it's going to it's going to be too loose. And if it's at the very bottom, it's going to be um, too tight and bottom out, bend the push rod. So you want it in the middle of that stroke. And that's that's uh, it's, I can turn it right now, but what it's doing is squeezing the oil out of that push rod out of the lifter and uh, that'll that'll become a, a lot looser in probably 15 minutes when it squishes the oil out okay so I'm gonna go to the next one here I can tell you can tell right off the bat that this this lifter lobe is already pushing up so I'll get it to its lowest point there now see it's getting loose let me uh, tighten this up so I can tell when it gets to the bottom of the, or to, when the lobe is pointing straight down and it's at its lowest point. So I got it tight again. Now it's loose again. There's lots of little finicks. So now it's, I got it snug again. The lobe's not quite all the way down yet. That's probably it right about there. The other push rod's going down. Now I don't want to, I don't have, I gotta wait 15 minutes before I turn it anymore because I could push that, that lifter still probably not quite compressed and I could push the valve down and hit the piston. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Don't wanna go any farther. And now this one is just bottomed out. Put the hook on there. See if this one's got a mark on it. And I'm gonna put a mark on it. Okay. That's it, those two are done. I'm gonna let that sit for 15 minutes, then I'll do these ones. 15 minutes, half hour. As I can say, it's, it's trying to squeeze the oil out of those hydraulic lifters and uh, if I turn it over right now, it could be holding the valve open. I could I could hit the uh, the valve on the piston. So we'll let that settle down, and uh, see this one's still fairly snug. After about 15 minutes, I should be able to spin that freely. If I can spin that one free, then I know this one's going to be done. I'm going to let that sit. Okay, it's been about half hour. I've been putting the pegs and all this stuff back on, getting everything lined up that way, getting ready to put the exhaust on. 
Uh, I can probably put this in next. I'll do these two push rods, put that in. So now I can uh, I can turn this pretty freely. Wiggle a bit sideways, so those are ready to go. And uh, I'll start on these two. Let's make sure I got these O-rings seated in here. Good. And then at the top, and then I just put a screwdriver under the flat there. Just push it on like that, just slide it on the screwdriver. Okay, those two. I'll do the intake one first, it's the hardest. So rotate the wheel around. It's going down. on I think I can I think I got everything <laughs> done here still gonna set the timing I got the clutch pretty much all set. The only thing I haven't done yet is change that one oil line. I'll probably do that shortly. I got the uh, oil pressure gauge in there. Oil pressure sensing unit. Sending unit. Okay. Looks a lot cleaner. Just gotta adjust this, change that line. I got the, the wires, all the hoses and wires all strapped in here. I gotta hook up the coil on the other side. Um, it's getting close. Got dust on here already. I gotta put the exhaust on. <laughs> uh, that's always a trick putting that back on, but yeah, I gotta put the exhaust on. I gotta put oil in the uh, gear case, so I, I wanna put the that oil in first. It's easy to get at though because the pipes, oh the one pipe comes in here so maybe I will put that in now. And I got I got that right here 70, this is synthetic 70 weight 90. Maybe I'll put that in there next. This is where the camera comes in helpful. I can look through there into the camera and see if the red light comes on at the right time. Okay, the red light's on, but um, okay, it should be off. It's not. Okay, I could do something different. Okay, this is what I need. Oh, let's see how much this thing's out. I 
I got it at uh, the dot over there, the advanced mark. Yeah, let me let me check something. Okay, the light's off. I'm just gonna turn it slowly. You can see I've got it turned right to the max in that one direction. Right there, I'm just gonna back it a little bit. Just right, just touch it. Just comes on right there. So I'm gonna check the mark over here. And I got the dot. Pretty close. Go back just a little bit. Yeah, she's. I was going to put this cover on. And I got a new gasket. It's like half as thick as the other gasket. And uh, it wasn't going on tight. You can see these two adjusters are sticking out too far. So I've milled that one down there about uh, 20 thou. I probably got another five or 10 to go. And I'm gonna have to do the same to this one, but luckily I got the lathe. So uh, I'm just chucking it up in the lathe. And I was just taking it off the top here, but I can't go too much farther because uh, uh, unless I get a hacksaw and I start cutting that notch in. I dropped it there. If I took the washer out now, it would probably work. But you need the washer in there, otherwise when you turn it, you turn the whole housing. So. I might have to take a hacksaw and just hacksaw the slot in a little bit more. I don't want to take any off of this end. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Take hacksaw that in a little bit more and then take another 10 thou off of this and then I'll do the same to that side. If you can see here how much I had to take off. Holding it as close as I can there. Quite a bit I gotta take off that, and I, I hacksawed a little slot in there to tighten it. So uh, that's what I gotta do to this one next. Yep, I'm just gonna rough it there. It's, it's almost two mil. Okay, I'm gonna work on that. Got those both milled down. Probably 40 thou, maybe 50. <laughs> Hopefully the screws aren't too long now because I took so much off. Yep, screws are too long. <laughs> I gotta cut the screws down. I think so. Or a little washer, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's too loose there. Oh my God, one thing after another. Unless I put a little lock washer on these, I'll look around. Yeah, I lopped off a eighth of an inch off each, each of them. See how that works. Still haven't got to the exhaust or the uh, oil line yet. Okay, that fits much better. Water would have got in there before. I don't think it would hurt too much because it's a solid state ignition. But uh, yeah, it fits uh, much better. It was like rocking so much. Okay, I think that's it for now. This body's done. Beer, beer time. A little bit of overspray there. Got the oil in here. 
got the uh, oil pressure sending unit on there, and a couple straps, got the ignition all wired up. I think the next thing is exhaust on this side here. Yep, that'll be it.